So in my work uh, in the domestic and sexual violence field, which I've been involved in for a number of years now, I'm often asked to speak about consent, particularly as a man who's involved in the field. I'm often asked to speak to other young men or to, to older men, to adult men about this as well. And I think one of the things that is the most important to me when speaking to consent from a male perspective has to do with not looking for the minimum standard of what constitutes consent. And I get this question a lot from, from men, well, okay, what, what do I have to do to ensure that consent is, is attained? And I, I stop them and say, well, that's entirely not the right way to think about it. It isn't about a minimal standard, like what do I have to do to make sure my car passes inspection? That's not the way we need to be thinking about consent. If we're talking about sexual consent, for instance. If you're really engaged in and care about your relationship with your partner, you should be deeply invested in their experience, not in whether or not you've met some kind of external standard of consent. Did you check the box or get them to sign the waiver? That's not what this is. This is your investment in them as, as a person. And so if there is any way in which your partner is not feeling good, whatever that happens to mean about the situation, that's something that should be incredibly important to you and you should be deeply invested in, in the solution to that, in the resolution to that. I encourage men, but really people of all genders, uh, but particularly men because they seem to be the least involved in this conversation, to think about consent from the perspective of, of curiosity and caring. I want to be curious and I, because I care about my partner, I want to be curious what they're thinking and how they're perceiving and understanding whatever it is we're doing together, whether it's sexual or not. I'm invested in the relationship and I'm invested in them and so however they think and feel is important. And I think that is especially important now because even as we're making strides in the broader conversation about sexual assaults, about domestic violence, about gender-based violence in general in, in the broader culture, the visibility of the conversation is increasing. I don't know that the subtlety and the nuance of the conversation is matching the visibility yet, and I would like for it to. I would like to see a lot more people, a lot more men in particular, speaking out not from a perspective of compliance, but from a perspective of actually caring about the experiences of the people that they interact with.